All right, this study on Colossians starts from chapter 1, Colossians 1, 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, and Timothy as a brother. Every time we read the scripture, we got to ask ourselves, ourselves, who is speaking? Paul, okay? And he's writing to whom? To the Colossians. In which spirit? Well, we are in this spirit here, the dispensation of grace. From Romans to Philemon. So, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, and Timothy, a brother, to the saints and faithful brethren in Christ, which are Colossae. Grace be unto you, and peace from God our Father, and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, for those of you that are new to this kind of teaching, hmm, the saints here, they are not dead people that are in heaven. Like uh, in religion, think people think, you know, there's somebody... Uh, that is in heaven, the, the Pope has declared to be saint. He's up there like he's a saint. No, no, these are people that are alive because the word saint means set apart. So if you're a believer, if you believe in the gospel of Christ, if you have se uh, accepted uh, the gospel of Christ, if you believe that Christ died for your sins, he was buried the third day, he rose again for your justification. The Lord saves you and seals you with the Holy Spirit of promise. So then you are a saint in the sense that you belong to God and faithful brethren. You are a brother or a sister. Faithful means that you have faith, <laughs> full of faith in Christ. Uh, you know, faithful brethren in Christ, which are a close. Kolos is the city which now is situated in uh, Turkey. And the salutation of Paul is classical, like every single time. I, Paul, and then it says, Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, we are here in the dispensation of grace. God is offering grace, is offering peace. Since the proclamation of this gospel of grace, which begins in Acts 9 with the, the Apostle Paul and Acts 20, who preaches the gospel of Christ to us. And so the salutation is, Grace be unto you and peace. From God, our Father, and from the Lord Jesus Christ. And he thanks God for this, you know, for this, brethren. He said, we give thanks to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you since we heard, what? That you are so good looking? No. <laughs> since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love which you have to all the saints. For the hope which is laid up for you in heaven whereof you heard before in the word of the truth of the gospel. You will notice, if you study attentively, that in every letter Paul will quote, will, uh, you know, hope, faith, and love, and he also will no quote the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ, because that's like grace and peace. That's exactly the content of this glorious gospel. Christ died for our sins, he was buried, he rose again for our justification. We believe, and we are saved by grace through faith. And that's not ourselves. It is the gift of God, not the works, so no man should boast. And it wants us to know that we have a hope laid up for us in heaven, whereof you heard before in the word of the truth of the gospel. What is the word of the truth of the gospel? Because... All the Bible is the word of truth. There is no doubt about that. See, this is a way to put on a line, on a map, all the Bible from Genesis, see, Genesis to Revelation. In these books here in particular, the word of truth is the gospel of our salvation. So Paul is telling for, that he's thanking God because they, they have faith, they have love one towards another, and they have hope. And this hope is laid up for you, for us as believers in heaven. And this is the work of God. You didn't lay up, you know, this, uh, this hope on yourself. Or you can't do anything to influence that. That's the work of God. God, the moment he saves you, he gives you this certainty. Because hope, in the sense of uh, Paul, is not, oh, well, I hope I can guess. No, no. Is the hope of the glory of God we are going to meet with the Lord one day. Whereof this hope of which you heard before in the word of the truth of the gospel. First Corinthians 15, 3 and 4. Christ died for our sins. 
it was better rose again for a justification okay the truth of the gospel which gospel is common to you as it is in all the world and brings forth fruit as it does also in you since the day you heard it you heard of it and knew the grace of god in truth so when you know this gospel that's the moment that you know the grace of god in truth don't get confused don't get carried around by strange doctrines especially with denominations they try to push you under the bondage of the law you got to understand that god is giving us now grace and is giving us salvation as a free gift so now we know the grace of god in truth when we know the gospel of christ which only paul preaches anyway going on as as you also learned of, of epaphras our dear fellow servant who is a, for you a faithful minister of christ faithful minister once again the word minister doesn't mean that somebody that goes around i'm the minister is a servant it's very different from the concept that we get you know minister in politics who is somebody very important or, or you know in, in the churches in the denomination a minister no a servant we all ministers in the sense that we minister we minister to each other the gospel of christ the objective of god is getting so saved saved my english is very bad this afternoon i'm so sorry souls saved and saints edified build up in the faith as he also learned of epaphras our dear fellow servant who is for you a faithful minister of christ who also declare unto us your love in the spirit so this is not oh, i love you love you just like uh, um, pretending to love you know this is the love of god <clears throat> the love of the spirit and so Paul continues for this cause also we also since the day we heard it do not cease to pray for you you know when he say pray without ceasing is pray for others specifically here for other believers and to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding that's what god wants and that's what god gives us with the gospel of christ he gives us the wisdom of god and spiritual understanding hmm? that you might walk worthy of the lord unto all pleasing being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of god when you get saved by grace through faith believing the gospel of christ he died for our sins he was buried he rose again for our justification is the beginning of this wonderful eternal life with the lord for now this side of eternity so to say while we are still here on earth and serve the lord the lord as his ambassadors ambassadors for christ and ministers of reconciliation and we have received the word of reconciliation we have received the ministry of reconciliation but there is more to know uh, the knowledge of God uh, uh, we can have this knowledge of God not by feelings emotions circumstances up happenings up up in the <laughs> what you say no we know it through the Word of God studying this glorious revelation of the mystery that the, the Lord gave to the Apostle Paul for us and that's the desire of the apostle but this also is the desire of the holy ghost of the holy spirit which inspired the apostle to write this god desire that we increase in the knowledge of god being strengthened he says strengthened with all might now it doesn't talk about the fact that you will be able you will be able to lift up weights you know in a gym this is a spiritual might <laughs> which is the might of God according to his glorious power you see is the power the strength that the Lord gives you in Christ his spirit comes and lives in you Christ comes and lives in you Christ in you the hope of glory unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness this is a tough part for people like me I'm a very impatient kind of person sometimes I don't I can't wait you know to go with the Lord 
but I got to wait as long as you want so I can serve him here as long as he want as long as desire he is the Lord being a minister in terms of being a servant being somebody who as an ambassador for Christ preaches the gospel of Christ so other people can get saved other people can receive the gift of eternal life by believing the glorious gospel of Christ unto all patience and long suffering God is very long suffering he is very patient so he wants us to learn this to know him is to know how patient he is how long suffering he is we are very uh, as you say quick to uh, you know we tell the gospel to a person maybe that person doesn't get it the first time or the second time and then we we lose patience we become uh, we become impatient and that's wrong we should be learning to be patient and long suffering because maybe a person will need to hear it 10 times 20 times before finally it clicks and gets saved so let's be let's persevere you know in this in preaching constantly this glorious gospel telling people look whatever your sins Christ has paid the price for all your sins he paid for all your sins the past sins the present sins the future sins he knows that we can't keep uh, ourselves sinless that's why we are dead with Christ but this we'll see another moment with joyfulness now like this joyfulness is not like we pretend to be joyful It's the joyfulness of the Spirit of God considering what a great salvation he has provided for us and what a great opportunity we have to preach this gospel to others in fact he says in Colossians 1 12 here giving thanks unto the Father which has made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light it's very important being grateful giving thanks is very important actually you can do nothing else but do this giving thanks if you consider one moment you're born in Adam you're sinner by nature for you for me for us as human beings to sin is easy as drinking a glass of water because you see in Adam we have received the nature of sin it, it, it's just like a leopard that's got you know that beautiful skin with, with spots the leopard it can't change his, his spots he's born with it he can paint him, paint himself but when the paint goes away the spots are still there you can cover up you know you can try to reform you can masquerade you can put a mask but then you become an hypocrite because you pretend to be some someone that you're not <laughs> you got to face it we still sin it's not happy it's not an happy thing but that's it and when i say sin i'm not talking necessarily about gross sin the way we intend as human beings <laughs> even sometimes with thoughts and words it's a condition you know but christ has paid for all our sins so we can be thankful for this we be we can be thankful that he has prepared for us a glorious position in heavenly places we can be thankful then that he not only saved us but he has sealed us with the holy spirit we can be thankful that he is given and left behind this glorious word of truth this bible that we can read study and know the lord and understand his mind the mind of christ <laughs> we can be thankful that we are blessed of all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in christ that we are complete in christ that we are accepting the beloved that we have been redeemed by the blood of Christ there are many reasons of course there are the physical uh, you know blessing like you you can have a family nice family a place where to live a car and we'll, yeah but these are temporary things anyway <laughs> they come and go let's face it they come and go but these spiritual blessings that God gives us they are eternal they're gonna be with us and they are for us for eternity okay so we can be thankful giving thanks unto the father in particular here which has made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance 
of the saints in light. What is, is this inheritance? Well, all that Christ has is also for us in light. Thank God. God is light. We're not going to be in some kind of darkness. In fact, it says here in verse 1, uh, 13, chapter 1, who Christ huh, has delivered us, has delivered us from the power of darkness. Can you believe this? We have been delivered from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Now, when it talks about the kingdom of his dear son, it's not talking of the kingdom of God on earth, which is reserved, you know, here the kingdom was prophesied, the kingdom was attained, the kingdom has been offered, but now the kingdom is postponed, but then it, this program in the future for Israel restarts and there will come a kingdom. We're not going there. We're going in the heavenly kingdom. So, you see, God has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. We already belong there. Thank you, Lord. You see, reasons to thank God are so many, and this is one of them. Of his dear son, the son of God, God the son, Jesus Christ the Lord, in whom we have redemption through his blood. That's amazing. We've been bought back. We've been redeemed. Huh? How? Through the water of the baptist? No. Through our prayers? No. Through our confessing sins? No. Through our actions, works, going to church, paying tithes, uh, helping the poor? No, 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 no. No. Many of these things are not even required. Like what the baptist is not required at all. That belongs to Israel. We receive... The Holy Spirit baptizes into the death of Christ. That's completely different. But here, it's telling us that Christ has redeemed us through his blood. Even the forgiveness of sins. You see, it doesn't say the forgiveness of sin, the, the sin problem. No, the forgiveness of sins, plural. Your past sins, your present sins, your, your future sins have been all forgiven by the cross. 2,000 years ago when Christ was dying on that cross. And now it goes into an explanation about Christ. It says, who Christ is the image of the invisible God. People say, I don't believe in God. I want to see him. Well, some people 2,000 years ago in Israel, they saw him walking among them. Still, many did not believe him. Many rejected him. In fact, the nation of Israel, sadly, here, hmm, reject the king and the kingdom. They reject him to the point of crucifixion. They didn't know what they were doing, really. Out of total wicked ignorance, they crucified him. That's why Christ says, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. And gave an extra year of grace in this period here, you know. When the twelve were preaching. But now, but now, we God wants to know that Christ, Christ is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. Now, to cut the legs for all, all these cults and sects, you see, ah, the firstborn, you see, is a is a creature. No, he is the firstborn from the dead, like the first one to be risen from the dead. That's what it means. Christ rose from the dead, the first, and then all those who believe in him, they will rise too. For by him, Christ, were all things created. If you believe this, <clears throat> you will just, for once and for all, shut down evolution, uh, scientism, um, and all these other theories, Big Bang and everything. The monkeys, evolution, evolution, I call it. You will shut down that, I say, I reject that, as from the pits of hell, in fact, Darwin, among many other things, was an Illuminati, Freemason, Satanist, Luciferian. We are not interested in that. We have the Bible and we believe what is written. For by him, well, all things created. They are in heaven 
at that in earth now this is very interesting this fact that talks about heaven and earth because this is what god created at the beginning in the beginning god created the heaven and the earth visible and invisible whether it be thrones or dominions or principalities and powers all things were created by him and for him so not only is the creator the agent of creation christ but has been created for him and he is before all things and by him all things consist it's like you know all things are held together held together sorry held together by the lord jesus christ and he is the head of the body the church who is the beginning the firstborn from the dead you see now the firstborn of every creature and he explains here if you read the bible explains itself you don't need even commentaries it's very easy you just read and ask the lord to give you understanding he will who is the beginning the firstborn from the dead that in all things he might have what the preeminence is the number one absolutely never on earth and having made peace through the blood of his cross by him to reconcile all things unto himself by him i say whether they be things in earth or things in heaven and you there were sometime alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works yet now has he reconciled paul is going to talk about the ministry and the word of reconciliation in second corinthians chapter 5 and here is giving you very good information in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight because you're in christ you're going to be presented to god the father by christ holy which means set apart unblameable nobody can blame you because you are in christ you are perfect because christ is perfect nobody can blame god is not going to blame christ you are in christ you become unblameable and unreprovable you don't need to be reproved uh, proved again or you know accused of anything if you continue in the faith that's an exhortation it's not a doubt like a continuing the faith grounded and settled and have been not moved away from the hope of the gospel which we have heard and was preached to every creature which is under heaven whereof i paul am a minister when i rejoice in my sufferings for you and fill up that which is behind of the afflictions of christ in my body's sake which is the church whereof i made a minister according to the dispensation of god which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of god even the mystery which has been hid from ages and generations but now time passed but now is made manifest with saints to whom god will make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the gentiles which is christ in you the hope of glory whom we preach warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we might present every man perfect in christ jesus whereunto i also labor striving according to the working which works in me mightily now this is a very fast reading of the first chapter of Colossians. I uh, stop here. I uh, stop here. We will uh, come back here and see together this glorious letter of Paul. Thank you very much. Grace and peace to everybody. Amen.